Sonoff recently announced and released the NS Panel, a smart wall switch with a touch display allowing you to control all of the smart devices in a single room. But depending on how many rooms you have in your house, this could be quite a costly solution. And so Sonoff has recently released some brand new smart switches that fit right alongside the NS Panel and are much more affordable. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to flash them with ESP Home or Tasmota for seamless integration into Home Assistant, right after I tell you about our sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay are a one-stop shop for all of your electronic project needs, offering high quality PCB printing services, CNC machining, 3D printing, injection molding, sheet metal fabrication, and everything else you need to make your DIY project become a reality. Check them out with the link in the video description. Let's take a quick look at the switches themselves before we crack them open. These new switches are called the Sonoff Switchman M5, and they are a Wi-Fi smart switch with an ESP32 inside and physical clicky buttons. They are available in a one, two, or three GAN configuration, and you'll notice that they are color matched with the Sonoff NS panel, so that you can have these side by side if you wanted to, with an optional frame for a neat configuration. Now then, because of that ESP32 that's inside, that does of course mean that like a lot of Sonoff products, we can put our own custom firmware on here, like ESP Home or Tasmota, which allows us to fully or seamlessly integrate them with Home Assistant for fully local control. I'm going to be using ESP Home for this guide, but these steps still apply if you want to do Tasmota, at least from a wiring point of view. In fact, check out the NS Panel flashing guide, which we did a couple of weeks ago, which will show you how to flash Tasmota on here instead. And it's pretty much the same process with regards to the software. You'll be glad to hear that there is no soldering required for these switches, but we do need a couple of things, all of which will be linked down below, along with the switches themselves, if you do want to pick them up. Firstly, as usual for these flashing guides, you'll need a USB to serial adapter, and make sure you get one that can do 3.3 volts and 5 volts in the same adapter, and you'll also need some dew point wires here. I'm using male to female wires so that the male end pokes neatly through the headers on the Sonoff, but make sure to get a pack that has all three types in it. You'll also need to make sure that you have ESP Home installed. If you're not sure how to do that, then you can follow the video up here on how to install and use ESP Home, although I will show you how to do the configuration in this video here. Make sure that you have HTTPS enabled in Home Assistant 2, which is required in order to install the firmware. Again, you can find out how to do that in this video if you are unsure. So to get started, you will want to unclip the power module from the back of the switches and then remove the two screws inside, which will allow you to pull off the black cover. Inside, you will find the PCB and we will need to identify a few components. Firstly, with the switch the correct way up, towards the middle top left, you will see our ESP32. And then above that, you will see a row of five pins marked 3.3 volts, ESPTX, ESPRX, ground and GPIO0. These are the pins that we will need to connect to for the initial flash. Below that, also take a note of the header with eight pins. These will be important later. Grab your USB adapter and make sure it is set to 3.3 volts. And this is usually done by moving the jumper between pins. Next, with the USB cable disconnected from your laptop, wire the USB adapter to the Sonoff as follows. VCC to 3.3 volts, ground to ground, the RX pin on the USB adapter to the TX pin on the Sonoff, the TX pin on the USB adapter to the RX pin on the Sonoff, and finally, we have the GPIO0 pin. In order to enter flashing mode, we need to pull GPIO0 to ground for a few seconds on boot. If you have a one or three button switch, then you don't need to wire this since the buttons are wired to GPIO0. The only button on the single model and the middle button on the three button version. If you have a two gang switch, then you'll need to add a wire between GPIO0 and the ground pin. I typically use a male to male dew point wire and jam the pin into the clip on the ground dew point wire. Now, set that aside for a second and jump into the Home Assistant and the ESP Home console. 
In the bottom right hand corner, click add new device and name your new switch as well as enter your Wi-Fi details and then click skip this step on the next screen. Then select the ESP32 as the board type and your configuration will be created. If we click edit on the config, we can see that ESP Home has created a basic config with everything we need in it for Home Assistant to connect to and it doesn't contain the information to connect the relays and the switches just yet but we can do that later with an over the air update after installing our initial configuration. You can now plug in the USB cable from your laptop to the USB adapter whilst holding pressure down on the pins to make sure that they make good contact. If you have a one or three button switch, make sure you are pressing and holding the middle button in order to enter flashing mode before you plug in the USB cable. Wait three or four seconds and then you can release the button if you are pressing it, but make sure to keep constant pressure on the pins. It may be easier to have someone help you do this. Then press the install button on your ESP home config and select the plugin to this computer option and then select your USB to serial adapter from the list and hit connect. ESP home will now begin to install the firmware to the device and this process does take a few minutes the first time you run it so make sure to keep still and not disturb the wires while this happens. Once you get to 100% complete you can disconnect and reconnect the USB cable to your computer to power cycle the device, this time without having the GPIO0 pin grounded through the cable or pressing the button. This time hit the logs button and select your COM port once again and you should see some logs pop up which means everything went okay. It's worth mentioning here that you may or may not run into a boot loop occurring in the logs where it's constantly rebooting and the logs are moving really fast. If that happens, then this is okay. I found that the power delivered through the USB port on my computer at 3.3 volts was not enough. But if you're able to connect and see some logs at least, then everything worked okay. Now disconnect all the dew point connections again, as well as unplug the USB to serial adapter. This time set the USB to serial adapter to five volts using the jumper pin. And remember the eight pin header that we identified on the Sonoff earlier. We're going to use this to power up the unit using five volts instead to make sure that it all worked okay. Wire VCC from the USB adapter to the bottom right pin of the eight pin header and the ground pin to the bottom left pin. Note the legend which tells you which pins are which. Plug the USB to serial into your computer and let the switch power up. Then either check your router's webpage to see if the device has now shown up or you can click the logs button in the ESP home console to see if it connects. This time there should hopefully be no boot loop and the device should display basic information. Now we know that the device has been flashed successfully and we can go ahead and reassemble the entire device and at this point you can then wire it into your wall. Once wired and powered up, we can now go ahead and configure our relays and switches so that they actually work. Up until this point, we have just added a basic ESP home config, but we haven't actually configured any of the relays or the buttons to work yet. Down in the description, you will find a link to the full ESP home config that you need depending on if you have a one, two or three gang switch. Go ahead and copy this information, particularly the bottom four sections, which contain the config for the relays, switches and LEDs. If you're interested in how the actual structure of an ESP home config works, then make sure to check out the previous ESP home video where we went into all of that in much more detail. Once the config is pasted in, hit the install button and this time you should be able to choose the wireless option, which will allow ESP home to install the new firmware over the air, which is super useful. Once uploaded, you should now be able to operate the switches physically on the Sonoff and your light should now toggle as expected. Finally, we just need to check that it's actually been added to Home Assistant. Go over to configuration, devices and surfaces and hopefully Home Assistant should already have detected your new ESP Home devices automatically. We can simply hit the configure button to complete the setup. If it's not showing up for you, then simply hit the add integration button, search for ESB home and complete the process that way. Once added, go into the device itself and you should have a few things that you can toggle. Firstly, all of the switches on the Sonoff, 
Plus you can actually toggle the LEDs on the front as well as their brightness. And there's also a status LED which shows you the connectivity of the ESP home device itself, which you can of course toggle on or off if you don't want to have that functionality. And there we go, that is how to flash these new switches from Sonoff with ESP Home to have them work locally and natively with Home Assistant. These new switches are actually pretty nice. I like how the color match them with the NS panel so that everything sort of fits together and looks really good. I would actually love to see some Zigbee versions of these personally. I think that they would be a very welcome addition. And I did put this on Twitter and I was told that apparently Zigbee switches are coming soon. So I can't wait for those to appear. Hopefully they can act as a router to extend the Zigbee mesh, which is always a welcome addition. Anyways, that's about going to do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you found it useful. And if you want to support the channel, then you can do so by becoming a patron on Patreon and your support allows me to keep on making these videos. Thank you to all my current Patreon supporters. As always, your support is very much appreciated. Make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed and I will see you in the next video. Pew.